I made another game. I decided this time I'm going to let my lips flap for a while. Since, well, I just haven't been talking very much. I could use some practice. But there should be a separate video without it. So this is Feta Filez Rebirth. Uh, probably about one or two of you would remember the original Feta Filez released in 2015. It was a flash game I made for a Ludum Dare. I forgot what the number was exactly, but the theme was growth. So my idea was to have a storyline where you fed a cat and made it make it grow. And I made it really... It was the first game I made that attempted to be kind of eerie in its tone. I think in the original I went a little overboard. But... I guess it isn't much better in this game, it's just... I like this sort of style. So the objective is to get fuel from these monsters so you can ascend into this ultimate form that allows you to shoot stronger bullets. And with those stronger bullets you can hunt down the cat. Where is the sucker? There he is. So as you can see, the, the cat is evolving. So this remake was supposed to be made in one week for a proc jam, a procedural generation themed uh, event. So that's why I have these very elaborate, procedurally generated caves. The original game just had a bunch of random blocks and tentacles. So this game is quite an improvement on that. Though that did make things a lot more complicated. And so I ended up spending several months on this game because I also had classes to attend to. And I was also using a new, well, a programming language I wasn't quite used to. Uh, I wrote the game in the Go, the language. Uh, I've also released the source code on, Git on GitHub. And, uh... Honestly, I'm not sure why I chose Go. I get kind of bored easily with programming languages. I like programming, but I see a new programming language and I'm like, ooh, let's drop everything and use this instead. So yeah, that happened with Go. That actually happened a few years ago, but I didn't make anything. So now I came back to Go and made something. So I guess... I did make something. What do I think about Go? Well, it, it's nice. I mean, <laughs> most programming languages are pretty functional, and Go is no exception. The only thing I didn't like about it was just the pickiness of the compiler. 
it was trying to enforce a certain uh, way of naming your variables, certain way of using your braces. Uh, which, I mean, I, I guess it's a good intention, but it's just annoying to me because I'm stuck in my own ways. And I'd like to continue to be stuck in my own ways. I also really liked the, uh, the libraries in Go. There were a lot of them right out of the box. You could do a lot of stuff with those. Oh boy. Here we go. So maybe I should talk about the game. Hmm. Development. Well... Let's see. This wasn't the first game that had a significant story that I've made. That was a super neckbeard. This was like the second one. Of course, I'm sort of skimming over it in my commentary, because I'd like to keep it nonsensical and mysterious and all that. But here's a trick. So you can warp to the other side of the screen to make things go by a bit faster. You have to push against the level boundary for about a second. I'll warp you to the other side. Originally, in development, I had a feature where the entire level was continuous and looping. So, basically, you could go from one side of the map to the other by crossing the boundary, but it would be seamless. So it would seem like the level goes on forever, but you're actually just repeating the same... Uh, the same structures. I almost had it working, but it became very, very complicated. Uh, there were... So it was working for the most part, but there were all these little things that just didn't go right. Since most of my code, you know, it depends on a coordinate system that doesn't wrap around on itself. So I suppose if I wanted to do something like wrapping around, I'd have to make the entire engine use cylindrical coordinates or something in order for that to work. So I didn't have time for that. I was already taking too long on this project. So I eventually removed the screen, uh, continuing. I removed the continuous levels and instead just put a hard boundary at the edges. And then later I decided it would be neat if I could add a little feature to warp to the other side. Because sometimes when you're hunting for the cat it's on the other side of the map and you have to fly all the way over there and there's not much to do. It also helps because there's a bit of a time race going on. You may notice the timer on the top left doesn't actually uh, have anything to do with winning or losing. Uh, those are part... The time on the left is your current time that it's taking to complete the level. And then on the right is the par time. Uh, so if you beat the par times for each level, there will be a special uh, occurrence So this worm guy is the only enemy that wasn't in the original game. Uh, not the best introduction, he's actually pretty tough, but since I'm in ascended mode, uh, he goes down pretty quickly. 
Where is that gosh darn kitty cat? Ah, I hear him. You can't actually, uh, lose your s ascension if you take enough damage. It rarely happens to me, though. Since I'm, you know, such an elite gamer. Should I even be showing this stuff, like, with my commentary over it? I think it kind of ruins the mood. So the original game didn't have these worms, it instead had these uh, big ol' red crucifixes that floated around, and you took damage if you touched them. The problem was, though, with these more complicated levels, it would be pretty easy for such a thing to, like, trap you and make you take unavoidable damage, so I replaced it with this worm. The worms will sometimes charge at you, but it's pretty inconsistent. concept for this game was, uh, it was inspired by a dream I had when I was young. And it basically had graphics similar to this. I had a dream about a game that had similar graphics to this, except, well, more primitive, and the background was, like, very saturated blue. It was like an Atari game or something. So... And it had sort of the same sort of vibe of flying around in a little ship and then shooting guys. Except in the dream, I had actually wandered off of the map boundaries and found an entire new part of the game that was hidden. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Old games had really... Old games had much more entertaining glitches as they were so archaic in their technology. Such a thing would never happen in a modern you know, game programmed with modern uh, memory management techniques. Though I certainly wouldn't be switching to assembly just to have that vibe. And I'm getting my butt whooped. Maybe I should try paying attention. Anyways, it's better to lead these guys into barrels. Of course, I just lost all my fuel in the process. This will also be the first of my games to be ported to Linux. It's one of the benefits of using Go, is that it works pretty consistently across platforms. Or at least it's supposed to. I was also going to port War Priest to Linux, but uh, that had some complications. 
and I was just really tired of working on that. But it might still happen eventually. Because I sort of... I finished that game in a bit of a rush. I should have taken a time to uh, market it and polish it up, make it look better. Was the good ending. I'm gonna show the bad ending too, because why not? I have more to say. So, I have cheat codes in this game too. They they work like old it games. So, TD, yeehaw, and then number. It's gonna take me to the last mission. Now I'm going to deliberately run out of time, and that will trigger the bad ending. I'm starting to wonder if these car times are a little too easy. I mean, most first-time players won't get the good ending, so I guess that's good enough. This is the first of my games that's been playtested more than once. <laughs> A uh, bad habit of mine. And I think... Yeah, I'm glad that I got it playtested a couple of times. It revealed some pretty glaring issues. Anyways... Other things about the process of making the game. Uh, the graphics were just... Uh, I use Aceprite for making pixel graphics. And I basically just took the graphics from the original game and made them neater. And uh, that was actually the reason I started the project in the first place, was because I just had a weird epiphany and decided to try and fit the entire game's graphics into a single 256 by 256 image. I got really into that for some reason. I spent like three hours trying to pack it all in. So then I decided I might as well try and make it into a remake since Flash was dying and uh, it would be kind of hard to play the original game. There is no background music in this last level, but uh, you've heard some of the music. They were just little minute-long loops I made in Renoise, the music tracker program. And it's one I've been using for quite a few years. It does pretty much everything I need it to, even though it can be a bit jank. And uh, I was using a VST, uh, Vital. It's a virtual instrument that I use to make the music. It's free, and it's pretty good, pretty full-featured. I'll probably be dropping a donation once I have money.
At this point, I'm just screwing around. How about I show the rest of the cheat codes then? <clears throat> so. TD NOVYMIR will regenerate the level. Uh, so that spells Novimir or a poor Anglicish. A poor Anglicish. Anglic. A poor romanization of the uh, Russian phrase Novimir, New World. I'm very creative. And if you can't tell that I've been learning Russian, then you will know eventually. <laughs> I get kind of obsessive. There's also TD Nepotus. That brings your fuel bar up to one minus the quota. That's mainly for testing the ascension, like this. You can also just use TD Ascend. TD NYAAH spawns a cat. If you use four A's, it will spawn a lot of cats. Oops. Darn. I got the good ending again. Alright, well, on the title screen you can type T-D-B-L-Y-A-T to go to the bad ending. In the original game this was the only ending, but I decided, you know, it might be kind of depressing. Because it's like, you know, fellas dies and uh, the world gets destroyed. It's thematically fitting, but, you know, someone might want more. Also, this background effect, if you can't tell, I just took the entire graphics sheet for the game and just layered it over itself and made it dark. That's why you can see little letters in the background. I was too lazy to make a fancy shader because the library I'm using makes it kind of difficult. So that is the game. And now I have screenshot material. Conclusion? Conclusion. <laughs>